Ladies and gentlemen, in this episode, you are going to hear opinions. And while the podcast is endorsed by Uriah Heep, the opinions of the host and various guests do not necessarily represent the opinions of the band or any of the members past or present. With that being said, let's celebrate the music of Uriah Heep. Welcome to Uriah Heep, the Magician's Podcast. I'll be covering every studio song the band has recorded and every bonus track that I can find. Each week we'll go over a new song from the beginning to where they are currently, and as they keep adding albums, I'll keep adding shows. Let the deep dive party begin. In the magic garden, some were singing, some were dancing. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a whole nother week of Uriah Heap, the Magician's Podcast. I've got four shows coming at you this week. We're continuing on with season 12, talking about songs from the album Fallen Angel. And before we get to that, since it is Monday, first of all, a humongous shout out to Uriah Heap for letting me do this podcast. Greatly appreciated. It. It's, it's an honor to go over the music of this wonderful band one song at a time. Wow, I, I'm um, getting close to halfway through the current catalog, which is pretty amazing. I know that uh, another album is in the works. So by the time that I get to the end of the current catalog, there will already be another album out. And I've got a few bonus surprises for you guys coming along the way. But first, it's Monday, guys. So we got to thank some people, you know, some people that help keep this show going, like my patrons. First of all, at the $5 Easy Living tier, we have Kenny Wymore, Brad D. And then at the $3 The Wizard tier, we have Peter Voss, Goran Erickson, and Frank Dealgard Mortensen. And then the $1 Traveler in Time tier, we have the one who is closed up like a witch's butt, the Airtight Gravesite. You know, it really means a lot to me that the show has inspired people to actually want to donate money to it and help cover the costs of the show and the prizes that I give away each month. It's it really, you know, that's that's a huge thank you. That's about the biggest thank you really that you can give. And it is deeply appreciated. I also want to thank everybody who has left uh, reviews on iTunes and Apple Podcasts, especially those are the ones I see the most, as well as any comments that are made on Podbean. And uh, we're getting actually quite a follower uh, list, I guess. What would that be? A, a group of followers on Podbean, which is really cool. And uh, I really appreciate that. So thank you guys very much. And those of you who have continued to share the show, who share the links, and let other people know that this show exists. It really helps grow the audience because there's only so much I can do besides putting it out there and just making it available. So thank you guys very much for, for all your hard work and helping to share the love of the show. And speaking of sharing the love, you know, we're a little past the deadline for 2021. We're looking at 2022 for helping get Uriah Heap inducted into the American Hall of Fame in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in Ohio. And you can help by putting your name on the petition. Go to facebook.com slash, uh, slash Heap Rock Hall. And that will take you to the page where you can sign up and you can share that link with other Heapsters and other people as well. We've got quite a growing list there. And uh, I'm very excited to see the potential. You know, it's uh, a lot of it's political, but at least with a petition that kind of raises the eyebrows of whoever it is that makes the decision of who is inducted, I almost said abducted, who is inducted and who isn't. Um, so, you know, the more we can do, the better chance they have of getting in there. We all know they deserve it. My God, 24 albums, you know, millions of sales. It's, it's absolutely insane that they're not on there already. Um, so yeah, thank you guys for, for those of you who have signed up and those of you who will. So facebook.com slash heap rock hall is where you want to go. And that link, of course, is in the show notes. It's also on my website. If you go to scotthaskin.com, click the Uriah Heat podcast link, and it is there on that main page, along with links to all the episodes, all the interviews I've done with the band members, all kinds of cool stuff. And, uh, you know, to like Phil Lanzon's artwork and his books, um, Russell Gilbrook's videos, lots of cool stuff. In fact, I don't know if you guys saw my Facebook post recently. But, you know, it is possible that you might be able to have Russell Gilbrook play drums on one of your songs or help produce 
uh, the guy's put himself out there. It's really cool. And he's he's a, just a musical genius. He's so passionate, so energetic. I really love talking to him because he he's just one of those people that, you know, you say anything about music and he just lights up like a July firework, uh, which is weird to say because he's from England. But in any case, uh, yeah, check that out on his page on Facebook. Very, very cool opportunity. And there are some other people who have made a really big impact on this show. My friends at Audionamics, I know I say this every week, but without their product, IDC, the Instant Dialogue Cleaner, this show would not sound half as good as it does. I just talked to one of my friends over there the other day and let them know again just how much I appreciate the products they create. Their other major product is called Extract Stems, where you can actually separate mixed music and it allows you to you know hear guitar solos better practice along sing without the uh you know the singer being in there and it's a really incredible product so go check both of those out at audionamics.com and of course their name is in the show notes i also want to thank my buddy dave white who gets up super early and listens to every episode i put out and shares it through the uri heap socials he is the media masterwork of the band for sure. He handles the website, which is immense. I mean, the number of pages that he's created and links to everything, the information is invaluable. It's it's really an amazing job. So go check out the Uriah Heap website and uh, shout out to Dave. Thank you very much, Dave. And of course, my buddy, Scott Lazinski, who I have known for a lot of years, you know, we're going on, what is it? Um, graduated in 90. So a lot of decades now. And, um, he designed the logo for the show in both the day and night logo, did a fantastic job. I still get compliments on it to this day. It is very cool and very well done. So thank you, Scott, for that. And of course, I would be remiss if I didn't think thank some of my friends in the media here. First and foremost, we have Ace on Music. Ace manages Leonard Skinner, Uriah Heap, and a bunch of other bands. You know, he's probably chomping at the bit to get back out on the road at this point, I would imagine. But as he said on his last episode, if you guys checked out his show, Ace on Music, which you can get on Stitcher and YouTube, there are still a lot of questions up in the air about how tours are going to work as we're hoping that we're getting away from the COVID phase and, you know, what's going to be required for travel, especially world travel, what's going to be required for venues um, are venues going to be 100% capacity? Is it going to be worth booking a venue because maybe there just aren't enough tickets to sell to cover the expenses of the band going there? There's so many things that are up in the air, and he gets into that in his most recent episode. Uh, very, very interesting stuff. Always a great conversation that he has on the show. I really enjoy it. I've caught every episode and loved every one of them. So go check that out. And also my friend Allegra over at gottahearemall.com, digging into the live histories of bands like Emerson, Lake and Palmer and Deep Purple and all kinds of cool tidbits and articles. Everything is so well researched, a lot of pictures to go along with those articles. Very well done site. And, uh, and I, I love the work that she does. Just amazing. And my buddy Brandon over at Metallicast who, uh, you know, runs my, my favorite Metallica podcast, actually the only Metallica podcast I listen to, but I've listened to a couple of the other ones. And, uh, for me, Brandon just has a great flair, great passion for the band and I really enjoy his show. So go check those out. Now there is also the deep dive podcast network that I am very honored that this show is a part of. We have over at the deep purple podcast, we have Nate and John over at Skinner reconsidered. We have the simple man, at T-Bone's Prime Cuts on the other side, we have Terry T-Bone Mathley. At Sabbath Bloody Podcast, we have Rye. At In the Lap of the Pods, we have Paul, Joe, and David. You may remember David from a recent episode where he was a guest. And over at Hawk Binge, we have Andy and Matt. And last but certainly not least, at Maiden A to Z Pod, we have Eric and Jonathan. It's really an amazing group of people, very supportive network. Uh, we joke around with each other a lot, but we also get things done and we we really uh, are there to support each other. And it's, uh, it's, it's an honor to be a part of that network. So thank you guys. Thanks everybody who supported the show. And I say that we get into today's song. Now, today's song um, had two versions. There was a short single version that came out. And that is the one that I got to know from the anthology that I had purchased years and years ago. And there is the album version, which is a little bit longer, has uh, some parts that were cut out of the short version entirely. 
So this is a, a more exciting version to me because there's parts in it I'm less familiar with, which always feels a little weird when I'm listening to a song that I know really well. And then all of a sudden a part comes in that I'm kind of like, where the hell? Oh, yeah, this is a different version. But it always feels awkward because the flow of the song is different from what I got used to. I remember the first time I ever noticed that was in the song Only Time Will Tell by Asia because I got used to the single version of it. And then when I heard the album version of it, the arrangement was slightly different. There were uh, more parts. It was a little bit extended from the single version. And and it just really threw me off for the longest time. And now um, I think if I were to hear the single version, it would probably be very weird for me because now I've become accustomed to the album version. But I'm sure that's happened to you guys when you've listened to edited versions, like something you've maybe heard on the radio. And then you get the album and you're like, whoa, this is just this is just weird. It just takes some getting used to and, and, you know, erasing what you knew and memorizing the uh, the new additions to the song. Um, It's always kind of fun, though, to do that and then look back on the original one and go, yeah, I don't even recognize that anymore. It's just it feels like it's missing so much because I'm used to all these extra parts and extended parts and all that. So a lot of fun. But this is a great song. It's one that I'm like I said, I'm familiar with from that anthology. It's called Love or Nothing. And I'm actually kind of surprised the way that they titled this because it wasn't Love or Nothing apostrophe. It's actually Love or Nothing. So I'm not sure why that was, but it's it's certainly a beautiful song. It's very uh, radio friendly for sure. And uh, let's just dig in and check it out. Here is Love or Nothing by Uriah Heep from Fallen Angel. Okay, so already, uh, as usual, there's a lot going on. They just jumped right into the song. Um, you know, there was one note really before the song actually started. Uh, but I love that sound. I, I love the acoustics. We haven't really heard a lot of that over the last couple of albums. So it's really nice to hear a little bit of return to that. I love that strumming. It just sounds so good to me. And again, it's it really makes me wish I was better at guitar. I don't know if it's just that I haven't spent enough time trying or I really don't have that coordination to, uh, you know, hold down the, the, the notes on the, the neck. I don't know what it is, but for whatever reason, uh, I'm not a good guitar player, but I love the sound of this kind of strumming. It's fantastic. It really creates a groove in and of itself, and it keeps the song in forward motion. Drums are nice and solid. The snare's a little gentle for this, which I think actually works really well. Uh, bass is on fire on this song, really playing some interesting stuff. Um, love the vocal. I love the way the, uh, the lines, the, the notes that they chose for the lines and especially that digression, uh, in, in the last line there. I love that change. Uh, it just really sounds good. Nice and powerful right out of the gate. Very cool song. Great start. Well, there's some nice bass slides in there and that chorus and then just notes that really pop in the verse. I, I really like it. Trevor's uh, on top of his game on this song for sure. Uh, the drums are very simple, but that's all they need to be. They don't need to be really flashy. I'm sure there'll be some good stuff in the transitions. But apart from that, they just need to be solid and, and keep the song moving forward. The guitar players are really carrying the groove with the strumming. So you don't need as much in the way of drums and bass to do that. But the drum, the or the bass, I should say, Now we're really back to what I would expect from a Uriah Heap song, you know, very active bass, wandering around, really making certain notes pop. Uh, The addition of some slides is really nice. But uh, yeah, this is a nice, powerful song so far. Now, the backing vocals, as it seems to be customary on this particular album, are kind of taking a front seat to the lead vocal again at points. The volume is just slightly out of balance for me. It works, but it's not what I would expect. Um, I'm kind of getting used to it just from going through the songs on this album, but it's really kind of a unique unique situation because typically, uh, even if you're at the end of a song where you've got heavy backing vocals and the lead singer's just kind of riffing a little bit, 
it really the the lead singer would still be out in front of that. So here it's a slight balance of power um, shifting in in the opposite way of what I'm used to, but it still sounds good. And I love how strong the, the backing vocals are. They sound so good together. Again, it just it kind of feels weird without that high harmony that we're used to, but it really works for this song. It, it keeps it within that zone of you know sounding really good without being something that some listeners might get turned off to. This is your your standard backing vocals with maybe a couple of extra layers than you would normally hear. Sounds great, though. there was a couple of really nice transitions there. I really like that vocal effect. And I really like the part after that. Uh, I could see that being something that live, you could really kind of drag out for a while, get the crowd involved in singing maybe. Um, but, but it sounded really good. I think there was a synth doubling the bass there. Uh, I can't say that for sure, but it sounded like it was a little bit thicker. It sounded a little more distorted. So I'm going to say that was probably a synthesizer. Uh, but the the whole part just sounded really powerful, even dropping out the music. Now, in the regular part of the song, there is an organ that's in the background, just kind of gently thickening things up a little bit. And you've got Lee Kerslake here uh, just you know playing uh, some extra kicks. I could say that's really easy to play. It sounds harder, but it's actually very easy to play. And doesn't really wear you out at all. You can kind of do that all day long. But it just sounds really good. It In places, it almost feels empty, like there should be at least some, you know, uh, organ or pad playing in the background just to to not have hollow space in there or space where there's just reverb. But it really does sound powerful the way the transition comes in. I really like that. And I think they did, did a really good job putting that part in. That was cool. I, I like that part too. I like the uh, transition back into the chorus again, but that part sounded good. I love the change on the last one, kind of, you know, break up the monotony a little bit because even though it's a short part, you're basically repeating the same setup four times musically and vocally you've got, you know, other than the variation of the rhythm of the words that you're singing, um, you've got basically the same vocal line four times. So it, it's nice to have a little bit of change at the end and break that up a little bit. Uh, I, I really thought that was a great transition into it because it was kind of shocking, you know, just out of the blue, you're in a different part and there wasn't anything really to warm up to it. And then here just coming right back so, so seamlessly into the chorus. Uh, very well performed, I have to say. I love the integration of these two parts now at this point of the song. Uh, I, I'm going to say that's actually probably a guitar with a bass. There may be a synth uh, doubling it as well, but I think it's more likely that it's uh, just a heavy distorted guitar sound on top of the uh, bass guitar playing there. So uh, I thought it sounded a little synthy before, and maybe it was before, but now it just seems more like it's a guitar. But like I said, I'm going to leave the room uh, the possibility open for the fact that there could be a synth underlying that as well. It wouldn't surprise me the way that this band is, has been known for layering music. So uh, either way, though, it sounds really good and strong. That part definitely cuts through that low end. And uh, the rest, it almost makes the rest of it sound a little bit thin because there's just like bottom end that drops in and then it's just gone. 
And the part after that seems a, a little light almost. So uh, maybe if they'd have let that ring out a little more, maybe, I don't know. But it it uh, definitely throws the uh, the balance of the EQ off for me a little bit. But it still sounds good. I mean, it's not anything that's distracting from the song, just something that I noticed. I love the long fade out. I love that there was a lot of passion in the vocals there. It's interesting because in this particular song, and I don't know that I can pinpoint exactly why, but I feel that there's a little more passion in the backups. Usually backups are, are they're just kind of there and they sound good and everything, but you know, it's hard to sound passionate when you're a chorus of people. But for some reason, I feel like there's uh, an, an emotional connection in the backing vocals in this song. And, and I can't really pinpoint the reason but I do find that interesting. I, I really love the riffing that we're hearing here from John Lawton at the end, too, as the song fades out. Feels very natural, feels very honest, like he's uh, he's singing what he feels. And that's great. I mean, that's the way that it should be. But a lot of times I hear people in these fade outs and they're just kind of like they're finding words to, to say that they think are cool and they're throwing things in that they think might sound good. But this just sounds natural. You know, it sounds realistic and natural and not like it was recorded in a studio. And I love that. I think that's very important for any kind of music, especially dealing with with love or romance or feelings. You really need to be able to connect with it. And I think in this case, you certainly can, or at least I can. Um, but yeah, it's a great song. And I really appreciate you guys hanging in there, listening to my thoughts on this wonderful song. Go check out the full song yourself and uh enjoy it because it's a it's a great song and that will wrap up our monday show guys i hope that you have a great start to your week set the precedence for what the what you want the rest of the week to be and then make it happen we'll see you guys tomorrow cheers thank you for joining me on this episode of uriah heap the magician's podcast if you have enjoyed this show, please consider going over to apple Podcasts or your favorite podcast outlet leaving a rating or a review be sure to subscribe to make sure that you are notified when new episodes are available. Please be sure to share this podcast with your fellow Uriah Heap enthusiasts and anyone who you think would like Uriah Heap, which should be everyone. And if you are so inclined, please feel free to contribute to the Patreon account. And if you are not a Patreon subscriber, you can also pay through the PayPal link on the website listed in the show links below. I would also like to thank Uriah Heap for their very generous support of the show. And thank you guys for listening. We'll see you in the next episode. Happy days. <laughs>